Again, our NKP program, for those who are new to our uh, NKP uh, program, I just wanted to, again, to share with the course of the day today is our focus is the preacher pastor as community builder. And so all our lecturers, our speakers today will focus on those areas uh, as a preacher. Someone asked me yesterday, what is a new kind of preacher? I said, well, it's a program designed through peer learning to en enhance and impact pastors and preachers in a peer group setting for personal development. So in other words, where our congregations will be able to know we are human <laughs> and that we are striving to be healthy preachers and pastors. So today, our focus is the pastor preacher as community builder. What we preach builds community and also what we don't preach builds community. And so we're going to be experiencing that today. I'm so honored to have my good friend and brother, Dr. Timothy Swan, the senior pastor of the Mount Zion Church in Woodlawn, Ohio. He is going to come now and give us a word of inspiration this morning to get us charged this morning for our NKP preaching forum. Dr. Swan, as he comes, come on and give him a hand as he comes. Where's Jason? And then there's a mute button on there. You have to unmute, but other ways, because otherwise it won't get picked up. There you go. All right. All right. I feel so special. <laughs> Bishop Hales and President Shield and to all of you, my brothers and sisters, God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. What a blessing and privilege it is to be here to share with you in this program. I can't uh, express with words how honored I am, uh, first of all, to have been asked to uh, lead and facilitate one of the peer groups, but also uh, to have this opportunity to share a word with you this morning. I look around the room. Uh, although I pastor in the northern suburb of Cincinnati, I'm actually from Chicago, and so I see some of my brothers, uh, Pastor Kleiss and, and some others in the room that I re remember or reflect upon having spent some time with in years gone by. Uh, now, they had me down for 9.45 to 10. They put me up a little early, so does that mean I can still go to 10? So. <laughs> I hope, I hope this works right here. Uh, my task, however, though, is to share with you a, just a word of inspiration and encouragement uh, to sort of set the tone for the day that we're going to spend together. Would you uh, allow me to direct your attention to a couple of passages in Paul's epistle to the church of Corinth? And um, in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter and then a few verses from the ninth chapter of that same letter. First Corinthians chapter one, beginning at verse 18. This is what it says. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Yes. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Yes. Sound like I could sit down right there. Yes. Skip down to 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified yes. unto the Jews a stumbling block, oh and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, yeah. it is Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Yes. Watch this. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, yeah. and the weakness of God is stronger than men. That, that, that's the word. That's a word for preachers and church leaders right there. But skip over with me to 
chapter 9. Pick up with me in verse 16 where Paul says, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Verse 19, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. Unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as without law. Being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I may gain them that are without law. Here it comes. To the weak became I as weak that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. Bless the word of the Lord. I want to talk for just a few moments about reconciling newness and an unchanging God. How do you reconcile a God who does a new thing when he himself does not change? When when, when God, who is about change and is about newness and is about transition, though God himself remains constant, consistent, and unchanged. Well, at the heart, at the crux of becoming a new kind of preacher is an ongoing process of personal transition from the, transi- from the traditional towards transcendence, from being what has always been toward becoming, as in moving into the reality of what can be. But in order to accomplish that, having to let go of some of what has always been. It's about hearing the testimony of your own truth while at the same time discerning the tug of the divine. The Bible is riddled and replete with examples of individuals, instances of transition and transformation. When we read the Bible through the lens of transition and allow scripture to shape our understanding as well as our response, scripture reveals a God who is always transforming the world and they that dwell therein. A God who will not quit until the whole world is restored to the life that God has always intended. Therefore, experiencing newness, experiencing change, receiving new insight and understanding, embracing a new call or a new direction, they are all normal and expected parts of this life of faith which we live. That's what Paul is talking about in his letter to the Corinthians when he says, In order for me to reach a greater audience, in order for me to have a greater grasp and scope, I got to make some changes. I've got to reinvent. I have to become something more than I've always been. And the God that we serve, he's in the business of enabling, equipping, and empowering those who are willing to go with it with his flow. Allow me to point out that not making transition and change when the time is right to do so will cause a retardation of your spiritual growth. Your life, your very future is threatened when you refuse to allow God to help you move in the direction that he's trying to lead you. You see, after becoming a preacher leader, 
an individual must choose the path of renewal or if they don't, they are in essence choosing to die. Wow. Renewal, claiming a new vision. It means redreaming the dream of your calling, recapturing the style of when your ministry was just launched, oh, cultivating a new climate and style, even a lifestyle that is about change. When I was in the Axe D. Men doctoral program, of which Northern Seminary is a, uh, an associate uh, school here in Chicago, in one of my courses, we were talking about being uh, current with the flow, current with the way hermeneutics and homiletics are moving in the way people are hearing the gospel today. One of the things one of my professors said is that there are shifts that take place periodically or seasonally in the life of the church. There's a new way of approaching and presenting a text for the purpose of preaching to reach and to change and transform. It involves moving from meaning as proposition towards meaning as an experience. Wow. Okay. From preaching as instruction toward preaching addressed to the imagination and emotion. From preaching of text toward text as interpretations of life. From preaching that says what the text says towards preaching that does what the text does. From discourse about the text towards displaying the icons and heroes within the text. From preaching isolated and considered in isolation, divorced from worship, toward preaching that is integrated into the ritual, the liturgy, liturgy and sacred act of worship. From preaching that is independent, rhetorical, towards preaching shaped by form, genre, and most of all, governed by the processes and powers of the Holy Spirit. From preaching about religion toward preaching as a witness that shares testimony that helps people embrace a higher spirituality. Yeah. Yes, yes. And so allow me just to say a few words about being a new kind of preacher leader mm -hmm. and what is required of us as we experience the transition that enables us to reconcile newness in ourselves with an unchanging God. The new kind of preacher leader as worshiper. We have to understand that worship both reflects and shapes our faith. It expresses our views of God and enacts our relationship with God and each other. We can identify several specific factors that contribute to, sp to spiritually vital worship and thereby will strengthen our lives. Here it comes. Our worship should be integrated with our whole lives. Yeah. Yeah. It can serve as the source and summit from which all the practices of our Christian life flow. Mm -hmm. Worship both reflects and shapes our lives in terms of our education, our study, our preparation, our pastoral care, our community service, our fellowship, our social justice ministry, hospitality, and every other aspect of life and ministry the question is, are you willing to worship God in spirit and in truth? And in order to do so, you have to be willing to be a new kind of worshiper. Wow. Well. The new kind of preacher leader as proclaimer. Churches, or more specifically congregations, we go through periods of transition. And we should. But transitions, moreover, change is not easy. 
As living organisms, we by definition are in a constant state of change. And whether the changes are in our membership or our leadership or the needs of the community or the broader culture or the, the, the crucial mark of healthy congregations and our ability to deal creatively and positively with change, the idea or the reality is, is that change is going to happen. Yeah. 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 And you can get with it <laughs> or get left behind. But there's something critical we need to understand that is needed in times of transition. Good, sound, solid, biblical preaching of God's word. When, ch when churches and individuals go through change, we need a word from the Lord. And in the life of every congregation, in the life of every preacher leader, uh, transition looms so large that it can become the lens through which scripture is interpreted. The congregation is addressed, the preacher is heard, and God is experienced. So what do we have to do? We have to trust preaching. We have to trust the word and embrace the sermon or the message as the word of God and trust preaching and believe that God speaks through it. That God has the power in his word to transform, yes. to usher in a new day, yeah. a, new di a new direction, new grace, new power, mm -hmm. new life. Yes. Because the God we serve is about newness. Yes. Now, we also have to be new as collaborators. Mm -hmm. We belong to a community that transcends individuals and congregations that transcends our circumstances. In fact, the community doesn't depend upon us on whether we agree or get along with each other. The community doesn't depend on whether or not we do the right thing. In fact, the community is not dependent on whether we do anything at all. The community depends upon and is held together by the presence of God. Yes. And as collaborator, our task is to help the community see and experience the presence of God in the midst of her. Mm -hmm. yes. That's how we become the new community builder. Christianity is a first person plural religion where communal worship and service and fellowship and learning are indispensable for grounding and forming our individual faith. The strength of our congregations, of our very lives, depends on the presence of God nourishing and in equipping and enabling us to grow in him. But we have to become companions with each other, supporting each other rather than competitors that get in each other's way. We have to be about the welfare and the shalom of the city, of the community. And when that becomes your goal, you can truly serve as a new kind of missionary as well. I'm almost through. Placing our ministry in the context of God's ongoing work of redemption. It provides a profound sense of meaning and purpose that transcends individuals, congregations, and circumstances. While God is deeply concerned with us, with our ministries, and with our congregations, Luke describes and Paul describes a situation where God is interested in saving lost souls. The recovery of the sight to the blind, the freeing of the oppressed, the proclaiming of the year of the Lord's favor. That's what Paul was talking about when he said the foolishness of preaching is what God chose to use to confound the wisdom of the world. We have this treasure in earthen vessels, but the potter has the right to do something new yes, 
with the clay when he wants to. In conclusion, as we go through this day, we want to take the integration of the theological and experiential information and new insights from the NKPL conversation along with the Holy Spirit's assistance in the application of this forum and resource of revelation about the church's current and future situation so that this presentation without hesitation offers a clarification of the church's participation in a contextual relegation of resources and anointing dispensation that makes the determination of our right now and eternal destination using my thesis and theoretical illustration along with the church in transition elaboration and I pray that with this an effective communication will be what you need for this generation. All I'm trying to say is if we are willing to be the new kind of preacher leader that Christ is calling us to be and if we are willing to be free from all men yet servant to all to be made all things to all men that we might by all means save some If we are willing by the foolishness of preaching to preach the cross of Christ Jesus as the transformational power of God's word, as it transfigures and transports us that we can move forward in the work of addressing all of the social ills and seemingly unchecked and unstoppable injustices and bring to naught on the authority of Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church, the devices, the decisive devices of the devil, then we can more effectively and efficiently mobilize the church. And when we are willing to allow God to make us new so we can do new things, then we can house the homeless. We can feed the hungry. We can clothe the naked. We can provide quality education, vocational training, gainful employment. We can heal the sick. We can comfort the sorrowful. We can care for the lonely. We can engage the aged, train up our children, mentor our youth. We can evangelize the lost, witness in our workplace, reclaim our communities. We can defeat the devil, tear down strongholds, break the bondages of habits. We can rehab the addicted, restore the afflicted, and recover the convicted. And as an NKPL, we can get back to being the real person, the real preacher leader that the church needs us to be. And then everything that Jesus promised and provided for his church will be ours to share. The kingdom keys, the binding and loosing, the victory over the enemy, life and that more abundantly, being more than conquerors, that'll be ours to share. Everything that Jesus came for, Everything that Jesus lived for, everything that Jesus taught, everything that Jesus gave us authority over, everything that Jesus suffered for, everything that Jesus sacrificed for, everything that Jesus died for, everything that he stayed in the grave for, everything that he got up on the third day for, everything that he got all power in his hands for, everything that he gave us the Holy Ghost for, everything that he built his church for, everything that Jesus is coming back for, it's already ours. It's available to us. We can have it. We can use it for such a time as this. And as long as we're willing to let God do a new thing and embrace and accept God's newness, despite the fact that he never changes, will be the new kind of preacher leader that the church in this generation needs us to be.